the question comes up and it should come up and it seems conspicuously missing from a lot of these discussions, which is why is it that there's no pro-life camp uh, 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 in the Muslim world? Um, why is it that like countries like Pakistan, uh, which espouse a type of uh, fundamentalism that people find scary, in fact, um, that is based on uh, based on a constitution, the first um, first functional part of which is that there will be no law held in abetment of the Kitab and Sunnah, and it's an ideal. They definitely don't live up to it. Um, uh, of the time, but it's an ideal. There is an attempt to uh, codify the had the punishments. Um, many people in the West, ironically, many of the people who are really yammering and clamoring to um, uh, make abortion illegal and wholesale cast lot with the pro life camp, um, many of those same people, even from the Muslim community, have denounced Pakistan. Why is it that they have a uh, the death penalty uh, uh, in a blasphemy law? Um, that's uh, enshrined in their uh, had the punishments. Um, Pakistan has all those things on the on the books. Why is it there's no pro life law there or in uh, you know many other places in the Muslim world? The reason is what is that people don't look at these issues like this. Like in the in societies like that, why would somebody go and uh, you know go and ask for their pregnancy to be terminated? Uh, undoubtedly, there are people who have, who do these things for illegitimate reasons, but the vast majority of cases would be just a doctor being allowed to practice his uh, practice or her practice and to make those decisions more or less for the sake of the health of the mother. Um, and do people delete inconvenient pregnancies from zina uh, in the Muslim world or in, in places like that? Yeah, of course they do. Do people fear for resources? Of course they do. But that's not the dominant uh, uh, form of thinking in the land, the people in their conception inside of their head, they don't understand why would somebody, uh, you know, kill their own, uh, kill their own children, kill their own fetuses. And uh, this is interesting, like even in, 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 in India, um, because of the, because of the jahiliya uh, over there, uh, amongst uh, the different types of non-Muslims, they have the Muslim community is the only community that has any sort of properly balanced uh, ratio between males and females because you'll see that that uh, non-Muslims uh, of particular communities because of their preference to have male children they'll abort their their daughters. Why? Because in that culture uh, a daughter is considered to be a curse or a burden, um, whereas in the Deen uh, the daughter is considered to be a mercy. She's considered to be a rahmah that comes into the house. Anyone who has a daughter uh, uh, would know that. Um, and so there, there isn't like this like obsession that we have to have this like pro-life movement. Yes, do people uh, abuse these things? They do, but there's no fixation on this issue. Why? Because unlike Catholics and unlike uh, uh, you know uh, a number of different Christian groups, we don't believe abortion is a murder, and we don't believe that 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 a legal human person. Uh, exists from the moment of conception or from early on inside the womb. Uh, and this is what I mean when I say we're not, we're not pro-choice and we're not pro-life. I mean we're not pro-choice, meaning that you shouldn't, you know, that you're not allowed to just like go and say, hey, delete what's in the womb because, uh, you know, I need to finish a degree next year. Uh, and so this pregnancy is really inconvenient. Or you're not allowed to have like a free-for-all zina lifestyle. And then, uh, you know, just every time you, you know, uh, you conceive a child, both men and women, uh, um, that every because you have to have a man and a woman to conceive a child, regardless of what the pronoun community says, um, that the, you know, that you can't just do it and then delete, do it and then delete, do it and then delete. Um, uh, but in the Muslim world, that's not really, you know, th that's not really the idea of like how you're going to fix those problems, right? How do you fix zina by outlawing? Abortion, do you think people are going to stop committing zina? Not. Don't say, well, like they're going to have to think twice because there's going to be consequences. It's not going to be as convenient. Yeah, sure. And statistically, there, there, there may be some mitigation. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not going to say that there is, that there, I can prognosticate that definitely there isn't going to be. Uh, it's possible. There's a possibility. 
but it's not going to be, uh, to be honest with you, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to mi mitigate a majority of zina, and I don't, I would be surprised if it even mitigated, you know, a large percentage. Why? Because zina itself is an animalistic act. It's an act of two people who are uh, in, a, in a setting where, forget about thinking about nine months in the future, they're not even thinking about nine minutes in the future. Yeah, people will literally do that act knowing that they may actually get uh, some sort of disease that will kill them. So, you know, the idea that somehow this is a way of, uh, you know, stopping zina from occurring in a society, uh, it may be in a very, very marginal sense. It may turn out to be like that. But it's like treating the least of, you know, penalizing the least of the symptoms in order to try to treat the disease. The disease, the problem is actually zina. Uh, you know, the issue with the fear of resources, the problem is uh, an aqidah problem. It's not... It's not going to change by outlawing, uh, outlawing abortion. If you outlaw an abortion, uh, it's not going to change. But coming back to the, the, the context of the Muslim world, there's reasons why this whatever pro-life uh, uh, camp doesn't legally have uh, clout in the same way as, say, the idea of like banning the sale of pork or alcohol or uh, you know other things that are you know, seen as haram and definitely uh, are less uh, of a sin than uh, less of a sin than 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 like murder. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the the issue is is that this fixation it's it's it doesn't seem to be a a Muslim thing at all. Um, rather, in the Muslim world, the sensibility that people have is that the doctor should be able to treat uh, women for their health. Um, as a matter of course, and that, uh, uh, you know, that, that somehow hobbling them from doing that, making them uh, fear, uh, you know, going to jail or litigation for what's really a remarkably complex uh, set of decisions. It seems unnecessarily cruel, and people do abuse it, but they abuse a whole bunch of other things. Uh, as well, I don't, I don't see the sensibility that this fixation that somehow this is going to solve the problem of zina or the problem of aqidah issues over there. I don't think this is the the the, the route that that sensibility takes people down.